Welcome to this demo of end-to-end -end pipeline automation and governance. My name is Linus Hakkasson and I work as a solutions engineer with SnapLogic. The purpose of this demo is to show how SnapLogic platform can work alongside other tool sets to enable a complete lifecycle management. Although all aspects and tools covered in this demo may not apply to every SnapLogic customer, the key is to illustrate how the JSON and REST native nature of SnapLogic allows you to easily fit in the SnapLogic platform with other processes and systems, ranging from error management systems, version control systems, testing, and help desk integrations. In this demo, we'll be following the lifecycle from the perspective of the fictional company Acme. Acme is using SnapLogic for several projects. One recent business requirement is to migrate from the legacy CRM platform to Salesforce. In order to do that, the Acme team has decided to have the legacy CRM invoking a SnapLogic REST API with the customer data. A SnapLogic pipeline is then responsible for mapping the customer data to a Salesforce object. What Acme also has is an architectural setup of two SnapLogic organizations, or orgs, and two Git branches, master and prod. The master branch is intended to represent the SnapLogic assets residing in the development org and the production branch, or the prod branch, is intended to hold the production org assets. Acme has a couple of roles involved with and around the SnapLogic platform, illustrated by these personas. The personas in this demo is there to give a feel for what type of tasks, interests, and responsibilities that are covered in this video, and does not necessarily represent the personas or processes in your company. The two roles that we will be spending most of the time with in this demo are the integrator and the architect. The integrator is responsible for working with the SnapLogic Intelligent Integration Platform to design and create pipelines to support the business requirements of the company. She's also involved in reviewing her colleagues' pipelines as well as asking for colleagues to review her work as it moves between the development and production organizations. Her colleague, the architect, is an experienced role that is responsible for reviewing pipelines and other asset changes as they move between organizations. In this video, the integrator and architect will be the key roles to progress the SnapLogic work to deliver the integrations to the business. However, several other key roles are there to make sure that the work is fluid, automated, governed, and tested. The test lead applies the company's general testing guidelines and policies to the SnapLogic tool and processes. Specifically, he will ensure that the integrator provide testing coverage as unit tests alongside with created pipelines. Similarly, the security lead governs the company's data security and quality controls. In our scenario, she provides a set of policies to SnapLogic that pipelines need to adhere to. In order to have processes automated, the CICD engineer uses a set of tools and services to create automated pipelines based on steps in the lifecycle. Specifically, she creates processes that automate unit test checks, quality checks, and pipeline promotions between the SnapLogic development and production orgs. Finally, although SnapLogic provides live schema introspection and validation to help integrators creating stable and predictable pipelines, an error in a production pipeline needs to be caught and alerts need to be generated. The operations role will respond to errors in production and oversee the help desk ticket lifecycle from the creation to the resolve. Before we start the demo, let's have a look at the SnapLogic pipeline lifecycle that we will be covering in this demo. For our fictional SnapLogic customer Acme, an error is due to occur in one of the pipelines deployed to the production org. The goal is to have automated processes in place to make sure that error is caught and reported using Acme's help desk tool and alerting system, which is overseen by the operations. Also, a copy of the pipeline project will be automatically created in the development org so that the integrator can start correcting the issue in the right org. When the changes are implemented and the right unit tests have been created, the integrator will push the changes to the Git master branch and then create a merge request. Next, automated unit tests and quality checks are run before the architect approves the changes. Upon approval, pipelines are automatically promoted to the production org effectively fixing the error. As part of the fix, the help desk ticket will automatically close and an update will be sent to the operations. Companies' help desk systems, error and alerting tools, version control systems, and CI/CD tools can vary or not exist at all, implying that there is no recommended or default tool chain for this process. For this video, the fictional Acme company has selected the below tools. 
However, it is important to note that Snaplotic is not providing recommendations or guidance on this tool selection. It's just here as an example of tools that can work alongside the Snaplotic platform. For managing and updating tickets related to our error, Yura will be used as a ticket platform. For alerting about the ticket updates, we will be using traditional email. ACME has selected GitLab for both the source control and CI-CD tooling. Again, this demo could easily be recreated with other tools with the same result and effort. For example, Zendesk for ticket management, Slack for alerting, Bitbucket for source control, and maybe Azure DevOps or Jenkins as a CI-CD platform. Let's now start the demo by seeing what happens when an error occurs in production. The key role involved here is operations. They need to understand when something goes wrong, the impact it may have, and how the rest of the team can work together to resolve it. As a reminder, here are the tasks we will now demonstrate. First, we will see how a Snaplotic error pipeline can catch the error and act as per ACME's processes. Those processes are creating a Jira ticket with the relevant information, sending out an email summary linking the Jira ticket, and finally, automatically copying the project where the issue occurred from the production org to an issue space in the development org. We are now seeing the Snaplotic production org where we have a project called CRM underscore migration. This project holds the pipeline that is used to receive incoming customers from the legacy CRM system and then mapping the customer fields to a Salesforce object. There is also a record replace snap that is used to capture and save incoming customer records in order for the integrator to more easily build out the pipeline with real data. We will see later in the process how this may not be a best practice within Acme. In the Salesforce create snap, we are listing our custom customer object that we want to populate. In a mapper, we are mapping the four incoming legacy customer properties, first name, last name, income, and company to the relevant fields in the Salesforce customer object. As you can see, our Salesforce object does not have both first name and last name, so we are using the JavaScript concat operation to concatenate the two to a single field in Salesforce. As an Acme best practice, this pipeline's configuration has specified an error pipeline. Any unhandled error within the snaps will direct the error to a pipeline called error reporting. It will also pass a couple of system variables, namely the instance ID, the label, the path, and the runtime identifier of the pipeline. If we open up the error reporting pipeline, we can see what the ACME process looks like for when an error occurs on the customer to Salesforce pipeline. In essence, a JIRA ticket is created and then an email is sent out to the operations. Additionally, a pipeline execute snap labeled as copy to dev calls another pipeline called migrate pipelines. The migrate pipelines pipeline copies the customer to Salesforce pipeline from this project in the production org to the issue space in the development org. So how can the legacy CRM platform call out to this pipeline with customer records? This is made possible by exposing the pipeline as a triggered task. In our case, the trigger task exposes a REST API with a bearer token so that we can insert customer records from outside of Snaplogic. If you recall, the customer to Salesforce pipeline concatenates the first name with the last name. If, for some reason, the legacy CRM platform calls the pipeline without the first name, there will be an error. Let's simulate this by using Postman to invoke our trigger task. Our operations team have now received an alert as configured by our error pipeline. The email contains the summary of the error and links to the JIRA ticket that has been automatically created. In the JIRA ticket, we can see the summary of the error, what pipeline it happened in, the stack trace, suggested resolution, and other information to support us in resolving the issue. There is now a ticket and a fresh copy of the pipeline that caused the issue, ready for the integrator to start working on. In addition to actually resolving the issue, as Acme's policies have changed as of recently, the integrator will also add unit tests to her work in order to ensure that the issue will not happen again. When she is done with the changes, she will push them to the GitLab master branch. In order to ensure that the issue is not happening again, the test lead is providing new practices and processes to increase the quality that gets eventually promoted to production. In this part of the video demo, the integrator will be resolving the issue in the development org's issue space where the problematic pipeline was automatically copied to. She would then create unit tests according to ACMA's policies and conventions, and then finally push the changes in a new git commit to GitLab. We have now moved to the development org where we can see the newly created CRM underscore migration project under the ACMA issue space. 
the customer to Salesforce pipeline has also been copied over correctly. A neat help for the integrator is that she can easily find a reference to the JIRA ticket by looking at the pipeline's notes, which was automatically inserted. By investigating the JIRA ticket, she understands the problem that caused the error to happen and how she will resolve it. Her idea is to validate the existence of the required fields, such as the first name and last name, before performing the mapping exercise to Salesforce. The guidelines from the test lead is to make sure that any transformation or routing logic is moved to a separate pipeline that abstracts away the potential endpoints and enterprise systems. This will not only help with unit testing, but also promote reuse of components and logic across the organization. The integrator now creates a new pipeline to house the logic. The name of that pipeline should be the main pipeline underscore target. This will be the actual pipeline that gets unit tested. In order to move the logic parts from the original pipeline to the new target pipeline, she simply copies and pastes the relevant snaps. She then deletes the original snaps and saves both of the pipelines. To have the main pipeline invoking a pipeline that now holds the logic, she uses a pipeline execute snap. The pipeline execute snap is instructed to call the customer to Salesforce underscore target pipeline when invoked. Now, the pipeline functions exactly the same as it does in the production org, with the only difference being that the logic is separated into a new pipeline that can be unit tested. To actually solve the problem caused by the customer fields not being validated, the integrator drags a data validator snap in front of the mapper. She configures the data validator snap to set the first name and last name fields as required. If any of those fields are not present in incoming data, the snap will throw an error that can be captured by an error view. The Snaplotic error management works so that any explicitly created error view overrides a potential error pipeline routing configuration for the pipeline. Next, she uses a mapper snap to make sure that only the actual error is passed back to the legacy CRM client in case of any error. The union snap guarantees that the pipeline consists of a single unbound output view. To enable an automated unit test process to check the output of the pipeline to expect the results, we also create an underscore test pipeline. This pipeline is created by invoking the logic in the same way as the original pipeline using a pipeline execute snap. To have test data moving into the target pipeline, a file reader snap is used in conjunction with a JSON parser snap. To save down the expected results of the target pipeline, a JSON formatter snap followed by file writer snaps are used. Now, she just has to point to a JSON file that contains the input data that we want to test the pipeline with. In our case, we want the example test data to reflect the legacy CRM customer record that originally caused the issue. Similarly, we need to provide expected results file path where the outcome of the target pipeline will be saved. Finally, the pipeline is executed to save the expected results of the test. We can now see that the expected response from the target pipeline contains the error message that we're getting from the data validator snap. Finally, the integrator uses the manual git push pipeline to configure her commit. In the commit message, she includes the JIRA ticket identifier that holds the issue.
the pipeline execute snap executes the GitLab underscore push pipeline. This pipeline reads the pipelines in a specified project and then creates or updates files in a specified Git repository in GitLab. The outcome of the git commit and push is seen in GitLab. As part of the integrator's commit, the customer to Salesforce.json pipeline was updated while the target and test pipelines were created. In the next video, we will be demonstrating the rest of the steps as part of this process, from creating a merge request for moving the changes to production, to automated unit tests and quality checks that need to be passed before the architect approves the merge request to have the changes automatically moved to production and resolve the race ticket.